When Mary Lennox was 10 years old, everyone said she was the most disagreeable child ever seen. It was true, too. She had a thin little body and a thin little face with a sour expression. Her hair was brown and her face was yellow because she had been born in India and had always been ill in one way or another. Her father, Albert Lennox, held a position under the English government and had always been busy and ill himself. The Mother Rose was a great beauty who cared only to go to parties and amuse herself. She had not wanted a little girl at all. And when Mary was born, she handed her over to the care of an ayah who was made to understand that if she wished to please the memsab, she must keep the child out of sight as much as possible. And then one morning, something mysterious was in the air. Although the servants were preparing for yet another party, something was clearly wrong. Nothing was done in its regular order, and everyone seemed to be whispering. Albert, is it really so very bad, the cholera? Is it? Awfully. You and Mary should have gone to the hills two weeks ago. Oh, I know I ought. I only stayed to give this silly dinner party. What a fool I was. And so it was that Mary's life was about to change. The disease sweeping through India would soon send Mary on a remarkable journey through fear and darkness, laughter and light, into the secret garden of her Aunt Lily. Clusters of crocus, purple and gold, blankets of Major! There's a girl in here. Do you mean alive? 
My name is Mary Lennox. Where is everyone gone? Where's my Aya? We searched the servant's bungalow as well, sir. It's just one black snake. And this girl. Why has no one come for me? I'm afraid there's no one left, miss. Bloody Mirgle, she escaped the cholera. Though God knows how. But where are my mother and father? They was. I'm sorry, miss. Where shall I take the girl, sir? Our orders are to burn anything that might be contaminated. To the governor's house for now. I believe there's an uncle somewhere. Yes, sir. You'll have to leave that picture here, miss. No, I will not. I'm taking it with me. It's your pretty mother, is it? No, it isn't. I believe it's my mother's sister. Very well. Come along, then. Can it be your dream? Surely it must seem like a frightful dream. How can it be true? What a mother come, come wake her up to play. What a father say, here's a rose for you. There's a girl who no one sees. There's a girl who's never gone. There's a heart that beats in silence for the life she's never known. For the life she's never known. She's such a pretty young thing. Perhaps if Rose had spent more time in the nursery, Mary might have learned some of her mother's pretty ways. What a nightmare it must have been for the girl to wander off to bed in the middle of the party to wake up the next morning with them all dead. Good evening, Major. Good evening, ma'am. I'm Mr. Craven's housekeeper. Is this the girl? Yes, ma'am. And here's her papers and death certificates. Her father was captain in my husband's regiment and a fine man he was, too. We're all very sorry. Thank you, Major. Good evening, ma'am. Thank you. Have a pleasant journey. Well, I suppose you'd like to know something about where you're going. Would I? But don't you care about your new home? It doesn't matter whether I care or not. Now, in all of my years, I have never seen a child sit so still or look so old. High on a hill sits a big old house with something wrong inside it. Spirits haunt the halls and make no effort now to hide it. What will put their souls to rest and stop their ceaseless sighing? Why do they call out children's names and speak of one who's crying? Well, you're right not to care. Why, your uncle won't trouble himself about you, that's for sure and certain. He never troubled himself about anyone. When the master hears the whispers on the stairways on his sail, and the spirits speak of secrets in the house upon the hill. He's a hunchback, you see. And a sour young man he was, and no good of all his money and place till he were married. To my mother's sister. Her name was Lily, and she was a sweet and pretty thing. You needed walk the earth to get her a blade of grass, and that's what she wanted. Nobody thought she'd marry him, but marry him she did, and it wasn't for his money either. And when she died... How it, did she die? It made him worse than ever. He travels most of the time now. It's his brother, Dr. Craven, that makes most of the decisions these days. High on the hills, it's a big old house with something wrong inside it. Someone died and someone's left alone and can't abide it. There in the house is a lonely man still haunted by her beauty, asking what the life can be when not remains but duty. Is it always so ugly? It's the moor, miles and miles of wetlands that nothing grows on but wild heather and gorse and broom, and nothing lives on but wild sheep and ponies. What is that awful howling sound? It's the wind. They call it wuthering that sound. But look over there. That tiny light across there. That will be the gate it will. And the master hears the whispers on the stairways dark and still. And the spirits speak of secrets in the house upon the hill. Traveled 6,000 miles to be here, and you are her guardian. 
least you can do is be here to greet her. I can't, no. I wouldn't know what to say. I'll be upstairs. Mary Lennox, this is your uncle's brother, Dr. Craven. How do you do? You're to take her to... You're to take her to her room. He doesn't want to see her. Very good, Doctor. Can it be our dream? Surely it must seem like a frightful dream. No one here she knows. Shall along the walls, dark and empty halls, catch her if she falls. Still no fear she shows. Well, here you are then. This room and the next will be where you'll live, but you mustn't expect there'll be anyone to play with. You've got to play with yourself and look about yourself, and when you're in the house, don't go wandering the halls. Your uncle won't have it. Oh, but please. Rose, I really must send you and Mary away until we get this cholera under control. Oh, what shall I do? Wander around the hills alone with our child while she stares at me the whole time. She's not staring at you, Rose. Mary just wants to look at you, just like all the rest of us. Well, good night, then. Yes, ma'am. There's a girl no one sees. There's a girl who's left alone. There's a heart that beats in silence for a life she's never
as I used to mun be too. Are you my servant? Well there, Mary Lennox, my name is Martha, and now that you're up, I'll make the bed. But aren't you going to dress me first? Can I thy dress thyself then? In India, my eye address me. Well then, it'll do thy good to wait on myself a bit. Tis fair wonder grand folks' children don't turn out fair fools, being washed and took out to walk like they was puppies. What is this language you speak? Well, of course, you haven't heard any Yorkshire living in India, have ye? Mr. Medlock said I'd have to be careful, or you wouldn't understand what I was saying. But I didn't know what to expect from you either. When I heard you was coming from Bombay, I thought you'd be a solid brown, I did. But you're not brown, more yellow, I'd say. <laughs> oh, Lassie, I didn't know you'd be so easy vexed. Come. I'll help you on with the clothes this time, if you'd like. You just pretend you're back in India and I'm your servant and you just give me that little yellow I foot. I quite right, thank you. Look there, out the window. It's the moor, it is, like a dull purple sea this morning. Do you like it? I hate it. Ah, wait till spring then, for the moor is fair covered in gorse and heather and there's such a lot of fresh air. My brother Dickon goes off and plays on the moor for hours. He's got a pony and birds and sheep. These and are not my clothes. I miss your uncle. These are nicer than mine. You just get these new clothes on then and wrap up warm and run out and play. That'll give you stomach for your porridge. Mrs. Medlock told me there's nothing out there but a big old park. Hmm, maybe you'll run into our dickon out there. Maybe he'll give you a run his pony. Maybe he'll. I don't know anything about boys. If I had a fine white horse. I take you for a ride today, but since I have no fine white horse inside, I'll have to stay and empty all the chamber pots and scrub the bars and such. Matter what's there to do on a fine white horse? It seems to me not much. If I had a wooden boat. Take it for a sail today, but since I have no wooden boat inside, I'll have to stay and catch and kill the mice and pluck the chickens for the cook. But what's there to do on a wooden boat? But sit up straight and look, and worry our boat would start to drift and float us out to sea and land us on an isle of gold. Oh dear, oh dear. I had a chambermaid. I take you out to play today. They say out there's a maze where once you enter there you stay. For certain we get lost. They come looking for our bones and find us sometime late next week and bring us tea and scones. But what if there's calanderols camp beneath a tree? Or what if there's a pirate's cave? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dearie me, if I wasn't so afraid, I'd take you at the door today. The talking birds and tales of fairies keep me scared away. And yes, I promise not to tell what else is there, although in a maze you chance to see, God and God it by a tree. Spell, and I've got all this to clean up first. You can find your way out yourself. It's down the stairs past I'll the bottom. I'll find it. Mary Lennox, I thought that I might like a skipping rope to play with. Mary Lennox? I forgot my rope. <laughs> Thank you. 
miracle at work in her garden grew to love me. From the gate he called out so kindly, last words thou love me rest here, I've ridden quite far. Share my tea, she paid me so gently, old cakes and cream, sweet plums in a jar. And every day to my garden, this man, who might he be, came bearing baskets of roses, for he loved me. All I own I'd give, Just a all I would ask. Is never to say you'll have me safe, you will keep me where you would lead me. There I would, there I would, there I would, there I would go. A girl who came to my valley. Archibald. Who's that? It's Mary Lennox, sir. Are you my Uncle Archibald? Yes, good morning, child. Are you going to be my father now? I am your guardian, though I'm a poor one for any child. I offer you... Is this my Aunt Lily in this picture? <clears throat> Why, yes, it is. Where did you get this? It was on my dresser in India. Maybe Mother put it there. I don't know. Your mother and my Lily. Excuse me, child. Who dressed you? Martha tried to, sir. Yes, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Lily, you've been dancing with that gloomy Archibald all evening. He's just shy, Rose. I think Archie has the tenderest heart I've ever known. <laughs> Silly Lily, have you been so busy looking into his eyes that you've missed the hump on his back? Yeah. <laughs> Do you hope you enjoy the gardens, child. But I want to know what happens to dead people. Yes, well. Quite natural, you should wonder that. We bury them, we put their things away, we remember things that they said, we talk to them sometimes, in our minds, of course. Can they hear us? And then one morning we find ourselves in the ballroom knowing full well we've been there all evening, and we come to the painful conclusion that we've been dancing with them again. I don't understand. Nor will you ever, child. They're not gone, you see, just dead. Is my Aunt Lily a ghost now? Why? Have you heard her? I heard someone crying in the house last night, but I don't know anything about ghosts. Is my father a ghost now? Does everyone who dies become a ghost? They're only a ghost if someone who's alive is still holding on to them. Maybe what I heard was mother telling me to be nice so you'll keep me. This house is haunted, child, day and night, but it is yours to stay in as long as I am master here. I offer you my deepest sympathies on your arrival. Did my mother have any other family? Plant a hedge, cut it back. Dig a hole, try to fill it. Plant a rose, tie it back. Find a mole, try to kill it. 
It's a maze, this garden, it's a maze of ways any man can spend his day. It's a maze, this garden, it's a maze of paths, but a soul may find no way. For an old man knows how a year it goes, how the cold hard ground in the spring comes round, how the seeds take gold and the ferns unfold, how an English garden grows. Skip, skip the ladies to the master's gate, sip, sip the ladies while the master's ate. Tiptoe the trees, come, come fly away, fly away, fly along, come along, fly away home. It's a come maze, along, it's a maze, 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 it's a maze
your waterfalls, part your frozen winter walls. See, see, now it's starting. And now the mist is left in high, leaving bright blue air. Running clear across the mall comes a may I say. The storm will soon be by, leaving clear blue skies. Soon the sun will rise, come the day, say hi, and you'll be here to see it. Stun and breathe it. All the day, stop and feel it, stop and hear it, spring, a sing. Skip, skip, the lady said, Matthew. Hello there, skip. Mary. Who are you? Oh, I'm Martha's brother. Well, what are you doing here? Oh, I frightened thee, didn't I? But why haven't I seen you before? Oh, a body has to learn to move low and speak gentle when wild things is about. You mean you're here all the time, then? Well, if something is sick, I take a look in it. Sure, I do. And find the ponies that wander off and the eggs that roll out the nests. But look here, my mother sent you a penny's worth of seeds for your garden. There's Columbine and poppies by the handful. I don't have a garden. But don't you want one? One of your own, I mean. Come and look at your seeds, why don't you? Well, if you don't want them, I'll just... I want to go in that garden, where the robin lives. I wasn't sure you'd seen him. Seen him? He's done nothing but chirp at me ever since I got here. Well, you have to understand he's making his nest, and I can't afford to have you interfering if you're not friendly. How do you know that? Because we were just talking about you. How do you think? He was talking too, or just you. What he thinks is that you're looking for a nest yourself, only it looks to him like your nest would have to be pretty big. Have you ever been in there? It's not mine to go into, Mary, but it might be yours, I can't say. He's been keeping it safe for somebody, that much I know. He has? Same way as the ivy grown up to hide the door. But maybe the robin has waited to hear why I want to go in there exactly. Being as he's got the safest nesting spot in all England, He's wise to be wary. Can you tell him I'm friendly? I could, but what if you wanted to tell him something else and I wasn't here to translate for you? Be much quicker if you learn to talk to him yourself. But what could I say that he would understand? Well, I wouldn't tell him you're an egg eater, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but are you interested in flying, perhaps? Or bugs? I'm afraid not. Well, then just tell him about yourself and I'll translate into Yorkshire for you, till he gets away with it. I. She. I'm a girl. She is a lass. As took a great leaf fancy to thee. Lost no fear. The monarch fear. She's took thee on for like to vex thee. Now to the sort. Now to the sort. She knows farewell, she mourn not fright thee. Can ever show me. They're better to know her. Show me the key. Show her the key. She's a lass, and thou art right, as needs a spot where she can rest in. I'm on sick, where I'll not be safe, thinking thoughts will be the guest in. Now to the sort, now to the sort, she fair be watching for the spring. I'll not be climbing up, I'll only be calling good morning, and fellow I'll see. Well done, Mary. <laughs> Milly, what are you looking for? Wait till you see, it's the most beautiful garden I ever, and nobody knows about it except Archie. Although I can not see find it because the door is always so covered over with ivy. <gasps> Maybe it's on this other side! <laughs> <laughs> I'll only walk around this like to see it for myself. If thou canst allow me visit, I'll speak now into thyself. There'll not be more than night and day by wenches racing round. I'd but see my side and dream, sending on the secret ground. I'd but smell the growing things. Count the rosy scents the wall Hear thy babes and first they peck Stretch my hand if they should fall Or if thou likes I'll bring thee seeds Or worms all in a mouth For if thou have me for a friend It'll be the first I found I'm a lass A trusty lass That took a great they fancy to thee Can of the show me Well, well, thus thou know her Show me the key Show her the key. Well then, I'm off then.
Well, where are you going? Oh, I can't say. But I'll see you tomorrow, sure enough. And if you need me before then, well, now that you and Robin is talking, he always knows where I am. But aren't you going to help me look for the key? Oh, but that's why I'm leaving, Mary. A body can't find a thing in a crowd. All right, then. Bye. And you'll be here to see it. Stunned and breathe it all the day. Stop and feel it. Stop and hear it. Spring passing. Mary Lennox! What was that? But where did it? What's that? It's the key! I found the key to the garden! Where's the door? Mary Lennox! Coming! Mary Lennox, we don't have time to play games. Miss Medlock wants us in the house right away. Mary! Skip, skip the lady to the master's gate. Sip, sip the lady while the master Pray never stop. Archie, I'm so pleased. I've finally located a suitable school for young Mary. A school? She needs the company of other children, particularly after a tragedy such as this. But she's practically just arrived, Neville. Does she want to leave? This is no house for a child. What will she have to do here? Wander the halls? As I do, you mean. Oh, this is a wretched house, Neville. Father should have given Miss away to you, not me. You are the elder brother, Archie. That would never have occurred to him. But if you continue to feel that you cannot live here, then leave. You were happy once before, and in Paris you're still a young man. I can't no... leave, Neville. But what good does it do to sit by the boy's bed night after night hoping for a miracle? They have been known to happen. When Lily died, I gave up my practice to care for them. You've been completely faithful, Neville. I'm deeply grateful. But I did not give up my responsibility to you, Archie. I cannot allow you to waste your life waiting for the inevitable end. I cannot. I'm not wasting my life, Neville. This is my life now. I beg pardon, sir. You sent for young Mary. Yes, come in, child. Perhaps we can have a moment before the storm carries us away. Take a chair. Thank you, sir. Are you well? Did they take good care? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So it's been so long since we've spoken. It's just, I keep forgetting you. I intend to find you a school to go Please to. Please don't make me go away. No, of course not. But perhaps you would be interested in a governess now that you've had a chance to look around knowing there's nothing to do. What do you say to that? Please don't make me have a governess, sir. There's everything for me to do here. There's so many gardens to walk around in and so much to learn about them. Martha gave me a skipping rope and Dickon gave me some yes, seeds and... Yes, all right. Play outside if you'd like. But if there's anything you need, would you like some toys? Or oh, books? Dolls, perhaps? Might I... Yes, speak up, child. Might I have a bit of earth, sir? A bit of earth? To plant seeds in. A garden. You like these gardens so much, then? I didn't know about them in India. I was always ill and it was too hot. Sometimes I would play at making little flower beds, thinking things, sticking things in the sand, but here I might have a real garden if you would allow it, sir. Are you sure there's nothing else? No, sir. Very well, then. You may have your earth. Take as much earth as you'd like. Thank you very much, sir. You may leave, child. Much worse being back this time, Neville. The dreams are more vivid, and I see things in the halls. It's the girl, Archie. You mean Mary, but I never see her. 
because you can't see her, Archie, because she reminds you of Lily. But you can't be serious. I can see the resemblance myself, although Lily's hair was more. You are very kind to take the girl in, Archie, but in your state it's simply too much. If you allow the girl to stay here, to grow up here, I have no doubt your dreams, to say the very least, will get even worse. But you can see the girl is lonely, Neville. Perhaps I should have more conversations with her. I don't think that is wise, Archie. A bit of earth. Until you are ready to send the girl she to school, it is my professional advice that you continue to obey your seeds. natural instincts and avoid her. The seeds will grow, Archie. The flowers bloom, but is their bounty what she needs? If I could have your signature on these leases. How can she chance to love a little bit of earth? Does she not know? The earth is old and does not care if one small girl wants things to grow. She needs a friend. She needs a father, brother, sister, mother's arms. She needs to laugh. She needs to dance and learn to work her girlish charms. She needs a home, the only thing she really needs I cannot give. Instead she asks, a bit of earth to make it live. She should have a pony gallop across the moor. She should have a doll's house with a hundred rooms per floor. Why can she ask for a treasure? Something that money can buy that won't die when I give her the world she asks instead for some earth. A bit of earth, she wants a little bit of earth, she'll plant some seeds. The seeds will grow, the flowers bloom, their beauty just the thing she needs. She'll grow to love the tender roses, lilies fair, the iris tall. And then in fall, a bit of earth will freeze and kill them all. A bit of earth, a bit of earth. Close the shutters and lock the doors. Raise the windows as he in pours. Candles only the ones you carry. Watch now. Careful the stairs, working in pairs. The stairs while the house stands red. Think of her 
I think of her. From death she cast her spell, all night we hear her sighs, and now a girl has come who has her eyes. She has her eyes, the girl has Lily's hazel eyes, those eyes that saw him happy long ago. Those eyes that gave him life and hoped he never known. How can he see the girl and miss those hairs? She has her eyes. eyes. She has my Lily's hazel eyes. Those eyes that closed and left me all alone. Those eyes I fear will never ever let me go. How can I see this girl and miss those hairs? Eyes. In Lily's eyes, a castle, this house seemed to be. And I, her bravest knight, became my lady fair was she. She has her eyes, she has my Lily's hazel eyes. Those eyes that love my brother, never me. Those eyes that never saw me, never knew I longed. To hold her close and live at last in Lily's eyes. Imagine me a lover. I longed for the day she'd turn and see me standing there. Would God have let her stay? She has her eyes. She has, she has my Lily's hazel eyes. eyes. Those eyes that saw me the happy. Died there from cholera, but I don't know what they did with them after that. 
Perhaps they burned them. I don't know. My mother died when I was born. That's why my father hates me. He hates the garden, too. What garden? Oh, just a garden your mother liked. Have you always been in this bed? Sometimes I've been taken to places at the seaside. But I won't stay long because people stare at me. And one time a grand doctor visited from London and told me to take off this iron thing Dr. Craven made me wear and to keep me outside in the fresh air. But I hate the fresh air and I won't be taken out. If you don't like people to see you, do you want me to go away? Yes. But I want you to come back first thing tomorrow morning and tell me all about India. In the books my father sends me, I've read that elephants can swim. Have you seen them swim? They seem altogether too large to be swimmers. I that? can't come back tomorrow. I have to go look for something with Dickon. Who's Dickon? He's Martha's brother. He's my friend. If you go outside with that Dickon, instead of coming in here to talk to me, I'll send him away. You can't send Dickon away. I can do whatever I want. If I were to live, this entire place would belong to me someday. And they all know that. You little Rajah, if you send Dickon away, I'll never come back here again. I'll make you. They'll drag you in here. I won't even look at you. I'll stare at the floor. You are a selfish thing. You're more selfish than I am. You're the most selfish boy I ever saw. I'm selfish. Because I'm dying! You just say that to make people feel sorry for you. If you were a nice boy, it might be true, but you're too nasty to die. No, please don't go. It's just that the storm scares me so that if I went to sleep, I'm afraid I might not wake up. Then close your eyes and I'll do what my eye used to do. I'll pat your hand and I'll stroke it and I'll sing something quite loud. And I have such terrible dreams. I have bad dreams too. Last night I dreamed about my father, except he had a lamp on his back like your father. And then when he turned around, he was your father. Some nights I dream that a round-shouldered man comes in my room on a beam of moonlight. He never says what he wants. He just sits with a book in his hands. And then I dreamed that the round-shouldered man took me off On a ride through the moors by moonlight He never says where we'll go We just ride across the hills till dawn And some night I'm going to ask him Is the night sky black or blue? I know he answers it of all that's good and true. It's no wonder you have bad dreams. The shadows in here are so strange. And once I dreamed that the round-shouldered man took my hand and we walked to a secret garden. I heard my father speak my name as we sat in the crook of a broken tree and, and some night I feel we should ask him how the old moon turns to new I know the answers in his book of all that's good and true I'm sure the answers in his book of all that's good and true Something like this. No, no, I must have his I've never Excuse seen me. him before. How can I hope to succeed with Colin's treatment if my orders are not told? I'm to stay in a room, but she refuses to. Oh, get away! Don't touch me! Don't touch me! No! Oh, I only wanted him to stop crying! What is that infernal feeling? It's the servant's room. Now you listen to me, Mary Lennox! The cholera is quite bad. 10,000 dead at last count. Do you see what you've done? I should have sent him away while there was still time. You are never to see Pauline again! Oh it's exactly what they deserve, letting their sewage run in the streets! The one order you were given, you have violated! How are we supposed to get to run with all the dead and freaking flames? Their servants drawing their millions of them! Would you like to speak to her, Doctor? No! Which one of you would like to give me a lot of water? Why did you tell me he was here? It's very warm out there. Because I was all I got to, and I want to keep my place here! So I obey my orders! And I suggest you do the same! Mary! Mary! Do you understand? Someone find her! There's a child! Come in the table, sword! Shaking the soul of the dead! Playing the floor in the foot! Shaking the room of her head! Not since I was a child, I fear! Mistress Mary, quite.
great contrary, how does your garden grow? Not too well, she said, see the lily's dead, pull it up and out you go. Mistress Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? found herself inside the secret garden of her Aunt Lily, but to her surprise and dismay, it was the saddest, deadest looking place she had ever seen. There was no trace of green, no sign of life. To Mary's bitter disappointment, the garden was not at all the sweet and colorful garden of her imagination. <laughs> Tell me what we are to do with Mary. 
She goes where she wants to go and does what she wants to do. I cannot hope to succeed with Colin Streetman if she is allowed to sneak into his room and disturb him. We must send her away before she undoes everything we have tried to do. I can't send her away, Neville. She has no one on earth but me. Keep her outside. She likes the gardens, I believe. What are you doing, Archie? I'm leaving, Neville. We have things well in hand here. Well in hand? Haven't you heard anything I just said? And then last night, I dreamed I walked through the maze to Lily's garden and saw Lily and Mary standing there. Mary standing right there in Lily's garden. I couldn't watch. I turned away. I was afraid. Why won't he say what he wants? Why must he speak in dreams? Why can't he say what he wants? To disappear it seems He should send this haunted girl far away Leave the house and lands to me I watched them walk around the garden She stood tall, grown strong and bold Then they turned and asked my pardon I couldn't speak, my heart grown cold. Why can't he know what he wants? He wants the past undone isn't it clear what he wants? His losing battles won To have never loved her Never known how complete A loss can be If she would disappear He'd start again And live like other men He could be happy then Just to disappear Is to be free Cut off from pain and loss You can't marry this Archibald He's a gloomy in that horrible house. You've said it yourself. He can't believe you love him. And neither can I. No one is asking for your approval, Rose. If you don't care what happens to you, think about your children. Do you want your children to be crippled as well? I will marry him. I can arrange what he wants. Don't do this. He's left it all to me. Don't bet him. Now he can have what he wants. Don't sweat him. Unfetter he don't will do be. Don't do this. Let him wander through the world. Let him go his lonely way. Albert and Rose won't want the girl to grow up just wandering around. Yes, well, perhaps we should look into a few schools for Mary. But somewhere where she could learn to sing would be pleasant. I'll leave it all in your hands, Neville. I'll go looking on the Just see you don't wake him. In ten years have I ever woke the boy. I'll gather the staff so he can say goodbye. For God's sake, Neville! Just let me slip away! I'm sorry. Tell them. Tell them whatever you always tell them. And a man can dream of a simple life, husband, child, and wife, love and faith all round. Then a man must wake, stand and greet the day, see what comes his way, in a heart. Sees. There's a man who lives alone. There's a heart that beats in silence for the life he's never known. Now let 
let's see. When we left off last night, the hideous dragon had carried the maid to his cave by moonlight. He gnashed his teeth and breathed his fire. The heat quaked, and we trembled in fear. <clears throat> I said, someone must save this sweet raven handmaiden, for surely the cost will be steep. So we lads all drew lots, our insides tied in knots, and I won, and the rest went to sleep. So I picked up my stuff, and I followed the trail of the smoke to the mouth of the cave. And I bid him come out, ye forsooth, I did shout, ye full dragon, be gone, or behave. And then under my breath, I uttered a charm said to make the worst fiend become kind. Knaves and knights of dire plights now diminish in sight, and it worked, and the dragon went blind. And he charged off the cliff, howling mad, and he died, and the maiden accepted my ring. And then you came along, and were brave, bold, and strong, and in thanks every night now I sing. Race you to the top of the morning. Come sit on my shoulders and ride. Run and hide, I'll come and find you. Climb hills to remind you. I love you, my boy, at my side. Now another foul dragon's appeared. I must leave you. He's scorching our land with his breath. From his lair this one taunts me, he dares me, he haunts me. Once again we must fight to the death. Would to God I could stay and instead slay your dragon, this beast who sits hunched on your back. Would God I could wrench him away from your bed, or cut off a tear from his terrible head. Could breathe out my fire on him till he was dead, or beg him to spare you and take me instead. As it is, I must leave you in care of my brother, the wizard who sits on the hill. Who has promised his art will soon pierce through the heart of this dragon that's keeping you ill. And I know that your mother, God bless her, would want you to do as I say and grow strong. And you know that as soon as I can I'll return, so be brave son and know that I long to race you to the top of the morning. Come sit on my shoulders and ride. Run and hide, I'll come and find you. Climb hills to remind you. Fly away, fly along, come along, fly away home. Come along, love, you've come a long way. You've flown all the day, come fly away home. It's a maze to start, and it's a maze of ways, but to lead a man astray. Taking left and then turning left again, how a soul may find a way. Hey up! Hello there, Mary. Hey up! Hello there. But why are you in such a bad temper, Mary? Are you worried looking for the key? No, I found the key. You did? So I see. You're wary of looking for the door. No, I found the door. I'm not wary. The garden is dead. No. It is. It's all dead. Now, a lot of things where looks dead is just biding their time. Now, you tell me exactly what you saw. 
The earth is grey and the trees are grey and there's this clingy kind of haze over everything. Like a body were in a dream. It's the most forgotten place I've ever seen, with loose grey branches looped over all the trees like ropes of snakes and dead leaves and roots on the ground. So still and cold. But Mary, did you take a look? A real good look at anything? Did you scrape away a bit of the bark and take a real good look at anything? Mary, the strongest roses will fair, will fair thrive on being neglected. If the soil is rich enough, they'll all grow wild and spread and spread so they'll all wonder. You mean it might be alive? But how can you tell? Oh, I can tell if a thing is wick. Wick? I've heard Ben say wick. When a thing is wick, it has a life about it. Now Mary, not a life like you or me. But somewhere there's a single streak of green inside it. Now come and let me show you what I mean. When a thing is weak, it has a light around it. Now Mary, not a light that you can see. But hiding down below, a sparks of sleep inside it. Just waiting for the right time to be seen. Clear away the dead parts so the tender words can form. Loosen up the earth and let the roots get warm. Let the roots get warm. Come a mild day, come a warm rain, come a snowdrop, a coming up. Come a little come a lilac, come to call. Calling all of us to come and see When a thing is weak and someone cares about it And comes to work each day like you and me Will it grow? It's will Then have no doubt about it We'll have the grandest garden ever seen Oh Dick and I want it all to be wick Will you come and look at it with me? I'll come every day, rain or shine, if you want me to. All that garden needs is for us to come and wake it up. But Dickon, what if we save the garden and Uncle Archie wants it back? Or Colin takes it? Aye, what a miracle that would be, getting a poor crippled boy up to see his mother's garden. Calling all of us to come, calling all of us to come, calling all the world to come. <laughs> I promise there's a single streak of green below, and now through the darkest night time, just waiting for the right time where nothing is wet. Get out of my house. I won't. You stop. I can't stop. 
I felt a lump on my back. I'm going to die. There's nothing the matter with the horrid back. I'm going to have a lump on my back like my father and die. Martha, come here right this minute and show me his back. I can't, Mary. He show won't... her the lump. Now feel it. Where? Right there. There's not a single lump there, except for backbone lumps, and they're supposed to be there. See, I have them too. See, there's no lump. It's not there. No, it isn't. It's not there. You were just mad at me for not coming back when I said I would, weren't you? Maybe. You were, and you know it. I'll leave you two alone, I think. This is nice. I'm sorry I said all those things about sending Dickon away. I was just so angry when you wanted to be with him instead of me. And then when you didn't come back like you said you would. I was always coming back, Colin. I'm just as lonely as you are. It just took me longer than I thought because... Because what? Well, you promised not to tell if I tell you. I've never had a secret before, except that I wasn't going to grow up. <laughs> I found your mother's garden. Do you mean a secret garden? I dreamed about a secret garden. It's been locked up out there like you've been locked up in here for ten years. Except I found the key. And the other night, when Dr. Craven and Mrs. Medlock found us in here, I ran out into the storm and found the door. And then I've been going every day with Dickon and working on it and you can come to What does it look like? Well, right now there's lots of branches everywhere. But Dickens says that if we cut away all the dead wood, there'll be fountains of roses by summer. I've never wanted to see anything like I want to see that garden. You must see it. Except you can never say where we're going or Ben says Dr. Craven will send me away. No, Mary. Maybe I can get William to take you downstairs and then when nobody's looking, I can get Dickon to push you through the maze to the garden. I can't go outside, Mary. I'll take a chill if I go. I'll get even worse. No, you won't. You'll get better. I can't, Mary. I'm afraid. I've been in this bed for so long and I don't want to die. I want to grow up so I can't get sick. I'd like to see the garden, really I would, but I can't. All right then. We'll just keep working on it until you're ready to see it. And whenever that is, you let me know and I'll get really- You must come back tomorrow afternoon after you're through working and have supper with me and tell me everything you've done. I'd like that. Good night then. Good night, Mary.
Oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm likely to be sent back to the scullery for this. And I don't like the scullery, Dick, and I don't know anyone who does. No one will be missing you at this hour. But if it's so dark, I can't even see where I'm going. And how am I supposed to know what it is once I get there? I can't say. Perhaps it's only something you're meant to hear. But all I can hear is my own self talking. Then perhaps it best be still. Dickon, is that you? I am Martha too. <gasps> Colin! Martha, are you surprised to see me outside in the middle of the night? Oh, that I am, Master Colin. And just now you look so much like your mother, it made me hot, jump. Martha, come look! It's my mother's garden. It is. It's a secret garden. And we're the only ones in the world that wanted to be alive. Hi, Colin. We'll have you walking about and digging same as other folk before long. But how can I? My legs are so weak. I'm afraid to... There's a charm in this garden, Colin. And the longer you stay in it, the stronger you'll be. What kind of charm? how you get out here. I'm not crippled. Then what have you been doing hiding out? Let folk think that you're a cripple and half-witted. Half-witted? 
Come here. I want to talk to you, and don't you dare say a word about this. I'm your servant, as long as I live, young master. Did you know my mother? That I did. I was her right hand round the gardens. Even now, I'm only kept on because she liked me. She said to me once, Ben, if I'm ever ill or if I go away, you must tend to my roses. And when she finally did go away, the orders was no one was to come in here. But I came anyway until my back stopped me about two years ago. I want to know how she died. She was sitting right there on that branch, and it broke. And she fell, and that started her laboring with you, except the fall had hurt her back. Still, she clung on to life until you were born. Then she put you in your father's arms and died. Is that why he hates me? I'm sure he doesn't hate you, lad. He doesn't even know you. Just wait till he finds out you can stand. I don't want him to know anything about this. I don't want anything said to him till I can walk. Do you promise? It's getting to be a full-time job, keeping track of all the secrets around here. This is a serious matter. Mary, take my hand. Dickon, Martha, you too, Ben. Do you swear by the charm in this garden that not one of you will mention this to my father until I am completely well? I promise. Good, then. What do you want to see first, then? I want to see the roses. Show me where the roses will be. Bit of her, a drop of dew, a single stem begins to run. Begins to run. That bit of her has pushed away the flowers bloom before our eyes. What a fine morning this has turned out to be. Yes, Doctor. I'm sure this headmistress will be quite impressed, riding across the moor on such a day. Perhaps she would even join me for tea. I dare say she might relish in a bit of civilized conversation, living as she does among spinsters and orphaned girls. I'm sure she will be quite flattered with your attention, sir. Beg pardon, Doctor. Mrs. Winthrop, sir. Yes, madame, come in. Do come in, please. Good day, Doctor. And this is our housekeeper, Miss Medlock. How do you do? I trust you had a pleasant journey? Actually not. I have always found the scenery by itself to be quite tiresome. Well then, you'll be pleased to find we've contrived to keep all of the scenery outdoors. <laughs> uh, won't you sit down? I've completed all the forms you sent us. And you'll see my brother has also included a contribution to the school's building fund. You didn't request it, of course, but as I told my brother, I'm sure you're in the planning stages of something or other. Miss Medlock, won't you see what's keeping Mary? I'm right here, sir. Quite right. Here's our girl. Mary Lennox, this is Miss Winthrop of the Aberdeen School for Girls. Good morning, Mary. I don't want to go to a school. Oh, but you do. A useless child never knows her worth, we say. My uncle Perhaps Arthur... if you could tell her a little bit about the school, she'd see there's no reason Certainly. To... And let me say from the start that you are not on trial here. The Board of Trustees has already accepted your application. Oh, that's good news indeed. I won't go. You can't make me. Mary Lennox. That's all right, Doctor. This is exactly the type of behavior we are best equipped to handle. My Uncle Archibald is the only one that says where I'm going. He says I don't have to She's go to any just stupid it, school. I'm sure. Oh. Young children are quite often depressed after such a tragedy as she has suffered. Of course. Perhaps she'll enjoy seeing some photographs of the girls and their work. I brought several samples of the fine lace for which I... Oh, oh, I hate you! You're an ugly pig! That's quite enough, young Your lady. school is full of brats and dirty beds, and all anybody ever does there is scrub floors. I hope you get hit by a lorry on your way home and your head rolls off in a ditch and gets eaten by mud. Oh. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, and if I get sent off with you, I'm going to bite your arm and you're going to die. Go away, go away, go away! Well, we have had one or two cases of this and... Mary Lennox! Bonjour! 
Doctor, what you have here is a medical problem. I'll speak with Mary alone, Medlock. Cherry Mouche, I'm going outside. You're going wherever I send you, young lady. And right this moment, it's into that chair. My Uncle Archibald said I didn't have to go to his school. For God's sakes, he doesn't care about you. Why do you think he left without even saying goodbye to you? Maybe he was in a hurry. You drove him away. You remind him of his wife. I look like my Aunt Lily. Now it is my job to find you a suitable place to go so that my brother can return. The next school I will contact will send no representative, your bags will be packed, and you will leave Saturday week. But I can't leave now. Colin needs me. The last thing the boy needs is you. Another month of trying to keep up with you and we'll have to put him in hospital or worse. But no, he won't because he's much better. You have no idea how ill he is. When Colin was born, the midwife didn't expect him to live a week. But I have kept the boy alive for ten years. Only now, thanks to you, he is in grave danger of relapse. But you haven't seen him. Do you want him in hospital? Do you want him to die? To die? Yes, to die. If Colin is too active at this stage in his recovery, if you push him to take his first steps too soon before his heart is strong enough, he will not survive it. Do you see, Mary? Colin's very life is in your hands. One moment he would be chatting away, and the next he would sink to the ground and die. And die? Yes. You have choices in your life. Colin does not. I will not see the boy in hospital for the rest of his life or dead before his life even begins. You must go and go you will. But that is all I have to say to you. Why are you just standing there? Are you quite amused to learn of your power? I didn't do anything wrong. You locked him in his room. You may go. You don't want Colin to get well at all. You want him to die so you can have this house. You will leave Saturday week. There's nothing here that I want. How dare she make this claim? Isn't it clear what I want? To serve has been my aim. Still I'd have to wonder who I'd be if it all belonged to me. If they'd all disappeared, I'd start again. I'd live like other men. I could be happy then. Just to disappear is to be free, cut off from pain and loss, at last I'd be. Mary Child, you had nothing to do with your uncle's leaving. It weren't you. Your uncle likes you, I know he did. Didn't he say you could have a garden? Didn't he bring you books and buy you clothes? Well, didn't he? But Colin's going to die, and it's all my fault. And what have you done for Colin except getting him going outside every day and getting him eating his food again and getting him to believe he can be strong? I think you were just what Colin needed. But you're not a doctor, Martha. You tell him I'm sorry. When I'm gone, I mean, will you tell him I didn't mean to leave? I think you better tell him that yourself, Mary. But I can't, Martha, because then I'll we'll act all high and mighty again, and then Dr. Craven might send him away, too. You're talking like you've already gone, Mary. I am gone, Martha. I wish I were a ghost. No ghost could do what you've done in this house, Mary Lennox. What you've got to do is finish what you have begun. I don't know just how, but it's not over till you See the storm is coming, see the lightning part the skies. It's too late to run, there's terror in your eyes. What you do then is remember this old thing you heard me say. It's the storm, not you, that's bound to go away. Hold on, hold on to someone standing by. Your heart is pounding. 
there's no place to hide You're frozen to the floor What you do then is you force yourself To wait it out and say It's the stream, not me It's bound to go away Hold on, hold on The night will soon be by Hold on until there's nothing left to try Child, hold on, there's angels on the way Hold on and hear them say, child, oh child, and it doesn't even matter if the danger and the doom come from up above or down below or just come flying at you from across the room. When you see a man who's raging and he's jealous and he fears that you've walked through walls he's hid behind for years, what do you do then is you tell yourself to wait it out you say it's the stain on me that's bound to go away child hold on it's the stain on you that's bound to go to your uncle in Paris. I think you should let Holland's father decide whether he likes him standing or not. But why would he listen to me? And what if it didn't get to him on time? I'm sure your uncle will send for you as soon as he can. Now, here's a pen and here's some paper. You do know how to write, I hope, because I won't be much help in that department. A little. Well, you don't have that much to say now, do you? D E Ah, Uncle Archie, how are you? I'm fine. Everybody else is too. Please come home. Oh, I have no hope. Martha says that you're in Paris. Is that very far away? It's a house, child, just a Do house. Do they have nice boys and can't get far enough away from it. Please come home. Now just sign it. Should I say that Colin's well now? Streets of Paris like a maze. Should I say that Dr. Craven? Sleepless nights and aimless days. I think that what you have is good. Let's get it posted on its way. He'll rush home then you can tell him. All the rest you have to say. Oh, kind sir, Uncle Archie, how I wish that you could see. When you come into the garden, please come home. Yours truly, well, maybe sincerely. How about you? Now I see you in the window of a carriage, then a train. Still my mind will not accept that in your grave you must remain. Then I hear your voice and turn and see a stranger's form and face. Must I wander off tormented place to place, to place to place? Where can I go that you won't find me? Why can't I find a place to hide? Why do you have to chase me, haunt me every step you're there? Beside me, where in the world, tell me, where in the world can I live without your love? Where on the earth, tell me, where on the earth can I stay now that you are gone? Why did I have to need you, love you? Why can't I rid you? from my mind. Why did I have to want me? Won't you let me put my life behind me? How in the world, tell me, how in the world can I live without your love? Why on the earth, tell me, why on the earth must I stay now that you are gone? Now Lily. 
Is that you? How could I know I would have to leave you? How could I know I would hurt you so? You were the one I was born to love. Oh, how could I ever know? I say to go on without me, how when I know you still need me so, how can I say not to dream about me, how could I ever know, how could I ever know, forgive Mary, look at the roses. They are found 
importance of them. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. How does your garden grow? I'm not contrary. You take that back. You make me. I will. I've got you, Colin Craven. <laughs> Archie, why didn't you cable us you were coming? I didn't know myself, Neville. <laughs> <laughs> What on earth is all that noise? Oh, no, you don't. I'm lots faster than you. Here we come. Colin Craven, not so fast. Mary Lennox. Father, look at me. I'm well. Oh, Colin, my fine, brave boy. Can you ever forgive me? It was the God that did it, Father. And Mary, and Dickon, and some kind of charm that came right out of the ground. Neville, were you hoping to surprise me with this news? I knew they were getting better, but I had no idea they we were... We didn't want you to know. We were afraid you wouldn't let us come to the garden if you knew. But how did you... William carried me down but the stairs But what have you eaten? You haven't touched the food we brought to your room for weeks. Martha sent us food. We ate in the garden. We ate enough for ten children. You did, did you? Oat cakes and roasted eggs and fresh milk It's and... all been terribly confusing after all these it years. It has been confusing, Neville. How about you take my flat in Paris? Stay there as long as you like. And when you return, perhaps I can help you re-establish your practice. In town, if you like. So that you can continue to carry out your own life, free from the burden you have carried on our behalf. Thank you, Archie. So are you going to stay home with us, then? Oh, Colin, Colin, look at you. It was Ben who kept the garden alive, Father, until we could get here. I knew it was against your orders, sir, but... As I remember, it was Lily who ordered you to keep the gardens. Ben, well done. Thank you, sir. And it was Dickon who... Yes, Dickon, I can imagine. If there's anything Excuse you... Excuse me, sir. What, what is to become of our Mary? My Mary? Clusters of crocus. Here's your key back, sir. You would like it. You didn't bury it, after all. I'd have never found it if I've you... I've nearly forgotten you in all this trouble. It's hard to remember everyone, sir. Well, no, it's not. Three people isn't very many at all. I should be able to remember three people quite easily. And would I be one of them? Mary Lennox, for as long as you will have us, we are yours, Colin and I. And this is your home. And this, my lovely child, is your garden. <laughs> 